unmute. Oh, now he unmuted himself. I'll unmute my. Good evening. Good evening, Rabbi. How are you? Baruch Hashem. How are you, Sasan? Baruch Hashem. Yom Yom. Excellent. Excellent. Baruch Hashem. Excellent. Can the oil in here? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're coming in clear. Okay, yeah. good, good, good. Okay. So it's the three weeks, and we spoke about this in the Sichas on Sunday that Abisha says that Bishvil uh, she. Basi Chorid, ye binya basi bottle, can be sure Shabon in the son of Megola, ye basi bottle, binya basi bottle, that since the Yidna and Golas should they mamish be bottle of building the base of Mikdash? No, they should learn about the base of Mikdash and then it'll be as if they are building the base of Mikdash. There was a firestorm of a printed safer that came out in 1870 about the Temple Mount and about the um, about the Kaisal. It had a very strong effect at its time and uh, there was a counter safer written. The safer was written by the, by the Hillel Moshe Meshel uh, Gelbstein. And there was uh, many G'dayli Sarla wrote Shailas and Chubis about it and the counter Shailas and Chubis about it. There was a safer from the Minka Churu Ayla's Tamid printed against that safer. And uh, it touches upon uh, the mitzvah of guarding the base of Mikdash. I don't want to jump ahead of myself. I have my, I have questions. I mean, when Mashiach will come, according to the Rambam, so there is Olam Kimen Hogin Oyeg. So who will be guarding the base of Mikdash? The IDF? Do the people that are guarding, do they going to have to be Koyanim? Or could they, have, could they be also Yisraelim? Or they must be Koyanim Alavim? All jokes aside, I mean, not jokes, question, but I'll leave this question aside and the history of these, this, the, this controversy. And first, we will just go methodically through at least the first Patek of Mesech Midas, and we'll see, um, we'll see how much of Mesech Midas we can cover. Just a second. Okay, I plugged in the computer. So, with uh, with the help of uh, of uh, the Mephoshim, we want to go into Meseches Midas. Meseches Midas is a Mishnayis, there's no Gemara on it. And the whole focus of Meseches Midas is the Kishmo Kenhu, the Midas of the Beis HaMikdash. And this, the Mishnah starts with the mitzvah of guarding the base of Mikdash. Dr. Mishnah, beginning of Sechus Midois, Bishloi, Shemakoimus, Akoinim, Shemrim. You could look in the modern Akoimus. I sent out a beautiful copy um, of the uh, of the Mishnais with the Pidish Mishnais Larambam and the Bar Tanura with a translation in English. In general, um, the way to learn Mishnais is there's several ways of doing it, especially Midas. You could learn it with the Bar Tanura, the Toysis Yomtev, the you know basically the Yochin Oboyas, which is sort of this the, the this Mishnais, or you could learn it with the Kahati. The Kahati is a really good way of learning these the Mishnais in general, or no specifically Mishnais Midas. The Mishnah, Bishlosh, Bukhama, is a kind of shame in Beis Amikdash. There's three places that the kind of guard in the Beis Amikdash. There was a mitzvah that, that the Beis Amikdash should be guarded. And we're going to focus a mitzvah Shem about this mitzvah. As I said before, there were several swatim printed about this mitzvah. But the Rambam says that this was honor. These were like honor guards, uh, sort of what you see today in Buckingham Palace, for example, where you have honor guards. And the same thing in the base of Mikdash, the Rambam says, You can't compare a palace that has guards to a palace that have no guards. 
In Parashas Kodesh, we talk about the mitzvah of the guards. And if three times it says, it's because the Bartanura says, says three times Shmita. Uh, so we have three places for the Kainim to guard. And because in Divri Ayamim it says 24 places, because it says, which farvar means par bar, the ones that are guarding the outside, klape bar. So there were 24 places. And because the Torah says three times mishmeres, so we say the Kayanim have the three, and the Levim have the rest. In general, some uh, Kayanim, it says a Kayanim halavim. Sometimes we call the Kayanim also Levim. So there's the mitzvah, which is counted as one of the 613 mitzvahs, the mitzvah of guarding the Beis HaMikdash. And uh, we learned from, from the Tanakh, from Divrei HaYom, there were 24 places. And we break it down because the Torah Shabbat Saps is three times Shemitah, the three is going to be for the Kainim, 21 will be for the Levim. And uh, as I said, we will go more specifically into this mitzvah. Does this mitzvah apply bismanazeh? Does this mitzvah not apply bismanazeh? Is it mayakov? Do you must have mamish 24? Uh, do you must have koinim alavim? Could you have Yisraelim? As I said, this will touch on the question today. Mitzvah Shem, when the base of Mikdash or Shlishi will be rebuilt, would there be metal detectors around the Harabayas? Um, would, uh, would, would we allow that the uh, Tzahal, for example, should man the booths? Uh, and if yes, would we have to have that point uh, and manning those booths? So in the days of the Beis Mikdash, there are three places of the Koinim, 21 for the Levim. What are the three places of the Koinim? The Beis of Tinas, that was the place where they made the Ktoidus. The Beis of Nitzutz, that was in the Tzofen of the Azara, called Beis of Nitzutz. The place of the fire, the base of Moike, the the Sha'a, which is also a Nitzitz means a spark, and Moike means the fire. He sent out some terrific pictures from the Sefer that has pictures on the base of Mikdash, so you can see the uh, the uh, the pictures of the three of these three places that the Koinim on the on the the three places that the Koinim would. Uh, that the that the Koinim would guard, which is on uh, picture number twenty six and uh, twenty seven. You have the, uh, the the little red star one, two, and three, which are the uh, which which is in the tzofen of the base amikdash. Alavim shaymanim. Uh, where was the Levim? Their post is Esen of Echad Mokem, 21 places. As the Mishnah explains, as if you go into the Harabais, let's start from, say, you're going from the outside of Harabais, Chamisha, five, uh, guard, war on the five, Al Chamisha, Shari Harabais, and the five the gates of the Harabais, as we'll say in the third Mishnah, we were the, where the gates were in the Harabais, Arba, four, Al Arba Pinoisov, Mitoich on the four corners, which in the inside of the Harabai is Pachamish, and then a five, Pachamish, Shad Azar, and the five gates of the Azar, even though we're going to say later to the seven gates of the Azar. So maybe this Mishnah holds that there was only five. And then most of the Rishanim say, the Rambam, the Rosh say that everyone agrees there was seven. It's just that the guards wore five from the seven. So one, why only five for the seven? So the marshal and tzaf, and then do, there were three in tzaf and three in daughter and one in the front. The three, three, and one. So the the the, the one gates that's uh, in between the right and the left and tzaf, and one that's in between the right and the left and daughter perhaps doesn't need a shimer, or uh, the other has been, but really there were seven gates, not five. It's just that the guards were on five gates. And four guards in the four corners of the Azar and the outside. The Echo, the one guard, Blishkes Akarben, in the little room called the Blishkes, in the, in, the, in the room called Blishkes Akarben, the Beis Amoiket. We'll talk later. It was a huge room called Beis Amoiket. That was where they had uh, fires constantly because the Shkoyna would sleep there by night and there it would be freezing. 
uh, they would have to walk without shoes and socks and their feet were on the, and they would wear like, you know, not very strong they, clothing. They were wearing the Arba Midik Una. So there were fires there to warm them up at night. That's why it was called Beis HaMoiket. It was a large room and there were four rooms in the corner, in the corners, and each one had a different function. One of the four rooms, as we'll say later, is called Lishka Sakarbim, where they kept the carbonus the, for the carbon tamid. So there was one guard there, the Echel, the Lishka Saparachas. One was in the Lishka Saparachas, the place where they would uh, weave the Parachas. The Echel, the Chorib, the Kapoiris, and one is behind the Kapoiris, in other words, behind the Kurdish Kadosh. So there were 24 guards always standing in the base of Mikdash. Machlokas Rishonim, they stood 24-7, or it was only night. Machlokas Rosh and the Rambam. Rabbi, uh, well, were they armed with weapons? What? Were they armed with weapons? So, the Pashtas not. The Pashtas not, because they were there as, as, as honor guards. Um, if they were there for protection, if you would say they were there for protection, then you might ask in the base of Mikdash Ashlishi, if we would say like the Rambam, that Olam Kimen and we need to have guards, maybe maybe you can only use Koyen and Malavim to be guards. The only tools they had in the hand, it was torches. Because they huh? one of, the only tools they have in the hand is a torch with a light. In case okay. one of the Kohanim sleeping or some of the guards oh, sleeping, the burn is closed. Very good. Very good. So summarize the first Mishnah. Kodesh says that uh, that the base of one of the Tayag mitzvahs is the Shamas and the It's three psukim. It's it's uh, in Parshas Kodesh. It says Atav Necha Itach Lefnei Al Eidos Nilvo Alacha the Shamas and the Shmeres Al Lamoid the Shamru Al Mimus and the Shmeres Mishkan Eidos. So we learn from here that there's one of the Tayag mitzvahs to guard the base of Mikdash. Yisraelim say it's uh, not for protection, but it's an honor guard. The uh, Tanakh it says that there were 24 places, and Chazal understood that three of them were Koinim, 21 were Levim, and the, here the Mishnah gives us a list of the places, basically on every one of the gates, of the five gates of the Harabais as you come in, then on the four corners in the inside of the Harabais, and the four corners of the outside of the base of Mikdash, and then on the gates of the Azara and the outside, then a specific, the few Lishkas, the Lishkas of and the Lishkas of Paraychas, why on the outside? The Mephoshim say because you can sit there. Otherwise, you can't sit. In the Azor itself, you can't sit. The Pashtus, guards are always on the more outside part. That's why you had on all five gates going into the Harabais, to the Temple Mount. And when you go into the Harabais, you're still not in the place of the Mesa Mikdash. You have no four corners guards. And then as you get closer up to the, to the place of the mik, Mikdosh, you have on all four corners of the Mikdosh, and then the, all seven or all five out of the seven doors of the Azara. Ishar Abayis, or Machazar called Nishmur and Nishmur. There was a person in charge who was called Ishar Abayis, and he would go around by every Mishmur. And there were uh, flames of fire in front of him, so he could see what's going on. Every every mishma and every guard that doesn't stand up, and stands up and and and, and uh, stands up, jumps up to his feet and, and greets the ish harabayis. Nikir shum yashem. So with this, it's nikir that he's sleeping. He hits him with a stick. Or you read it the other way, if a Mishma didn't stand up, so then and if he didn't respond, he hits him with a stick. But he had permission to burn his 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 cloak. And what would you hear people saying, Yerushalayim, what's this a commotion going on in the Azara? It's the sound, the hoopla, the, the sound of a Ben Levi who is being hit and his begodim are being burnt. Elizabeth Yaakov was from an early generation of Tanoi. 
And in the Gemara, Bavli, Yumad after Zion, it sounds like he was a Tana that learned the Meseches Midas. He was a Chabr of Rebeleza Godlan. He lived in the end of the further of the time of the second base of Mikdash. So he said a story. Hamachas Motza Tzachayim Ayoshem. Then my, my mother's brother was a guard and he was sleeping. The sofa was Ksusa and they burnt his clothing. Is that allowed on Shabbos, Rabbi? If you're allowed to burn his clothing on Shabbos? Oh, you're allowed to these torches and to burn somebody on, on Shabbat. But, with, with, but that's that a separate. Uh, punitive, uh, you're not allowed to punish in Shabbos, but uh, here could be an exception. I don't know, it's a good question. Rabbi, in the army, when you guard, they have a special uh, officer that come around to check if you're sleeping or not, and sometimes they steal your gun, and then you're in trouble. <laughs> Why? Oh, well, obviously you're in trouble then. Yeah, yeah. But but I remember when I was in the beginning of the army, uh, they put you to guard here, to guard there, and you have to be up the whole night, you know. They have different mishmar, different uh, uh, shift. And twice or three times during the night, uh, one officer come to check if you're up there, if you, you know, you're not sleeping. There's a beautiful story that uh, Chosset, that Mendel Futafas once told at a Fabrengen, that uh, that there was a um, was a Russian soldier that was standing guard um, in front of the Winter Palace base, you know, and uh, in, in Petersburg, and there was a freezing out. Yeah, Russia gets the frost gets to your bones, and uh, the guy almost froze to death, but he wouldn't move from his post. He wouldn't move from the post, but he was almost frozen to death. And uh, towards the morning, his superior came and he sees how he's shivering and he's almost, he's almost frozen. They gave him a slap on his face. He said, what? You are frozen? You have the honor to stand guard for the Tsar's palace. Yeah, that should warm the blood in your skin. You should be hot. You should be red hot, not cold. Yeah, yeah, such stories only come out from Russia. But uh, the point is that, uh, that uh, yeah, the point is well taken. That uh, when we're doing our Avodah Sashem, there's no reason to get lethargic. You know, if a person, if a person's busy doing something really important, they don't get tired. Okay, you do the story that uh, a woman asked the Rebbe, he doesn't get, he's, he's, not, he's so old, and he's standing on his feet for seven hours, giving dollars, doesn't he get tired? The Rebbe said, when you count diamonds, you don't get tired. You count diamonds, you don't get tired. A person is lethargic, and come, come, oh, you move. Can't wait to finish the day, or go retire to bed. But if a person, is in the middle of an unbelievable project. He's counting money, he's counting money. And they're not single dollar bills, they're hundreds. He doesn't get tired. If he's in the middle of an exciting project, he doesn't get tired. Aye, there's a shaymer from the Ebishtet. We have a tafki in this world. So how do we get, how do we get tired? We shouldn't be get tired. We shouldn't get frozen. We should be red hot. So when the Isha Rabbi sees that this guy is sleeping, why are you sleeping? How could you be tired? You're standing and guarding Beis Hashem. It's an unbelievable lesson for all of us that uh, when we're doing our Avodah Hashem, Mishem and Mishmed HaKodesh, the Ramam says that Lo Yishev et Elei V'Gulvad or Kol Ish V'Yish or Ish V'Yisho Shanod Ruchi Oisoi, the Ramam says the end of Shmita Vyoval, that every yid that his heart that carried him to, to serve the Abishtar is in the Skadish Kodish Kadoshim. And he has the Kadush of a coin and a levi. And he's then he's Shemir Mishmeda Sakodish. So when we are Shemir Mishmeda Sakodish, there's no reason to get lethargic. There's no reason to get admired. We should be on an adrenaline. We have a shlichus from the Rabbanu to do in this world. We should be 
we should be on wheels. We should be full of enthusiasm and excitement that the Rebbe Nishkelem gave us an unbelievable shlichus to do. And therefore, we're not tired. And we're tired. Oh, so the shoes, yeshloi, listen of esksusoi, and and chayvte b'magloi. Okay, next Mishnah. There was a rov from Australia, Rabbi Gutnik. Yeah. When he was young, he came to New York, and the Rebbe invited him to eat with him on Yom tonight. It was Friday night. He was starving. He didn't eat all day. And I told him make kiddush and, and uh, eat fish and and challah, whatever. So he, he barely ate like a zayit. But the, what the aloha is, he wasn't feel comfortable next to the rabbi to eat. So the rabbi told him, why don't you eat? So he said, I'm good, I'm good. And then he asked the rabbi, how the kianim was eating in the base of Didn't they scare the, this? So the rabbi smiled. He said, the first time maybe they scare. After a little while, you get used to it. I said the the the, the mishmeret that the the watching is the best amigdash is scared is Hashem is learning after a little while you get yes to you could fall asleep. Uh, okay. At Sabbat came by Kodesh Chazisicha Lidus Uschech Vedecha. Now we're in Golos. It's we we're we're uh, we're on fire. We can't wait to be in the binyan beis amigdash. Can't wait to sit there at a fabrengen. I'm all of me. You can't sit somewhere fabrengen and shlofen. It's that we can. But then never again, never again, never again. We can't wait to be at another for Vrengi. We're not going to sleep for one minute. We're going to take in choice of Batsomas de Vrengi. We're going to drink it with thirst every moment of it. Hamisha showed him, oh, you, Mishnah Gimel. Hamisha showed him a lot of eyes. Arabais had five gates. We said there were, now the Mishnah said the places where they guarded. The first thing was, that the Levim went on the five gates of the Arabais. And the other thing was the five out of the seven gates and the Azardis. So now the Mishnah is going to go through where these gates were and how they functioned. The Mishnah showed him a lot of the five gates of Arabais. Shnei Shari Chuldam in Adoram. In Adoram there were two Shari Chuldam. Shemesh is Vizir. They use it Nisi Vizir. If you go today, Yerushalayim, and you go, say, with a bus, or you drive the car, and you go through Shadash buses, the Dung Gate. As soon as you go up, right, you see you see the Shari Chulda. There's two gates that are closed up. They were closed up later, perhaps. And uh, even though the, the, the even though things changed from the first and second base of Mikdash, and the second base of Mikdash was totally demolished and then rebuilt in the time of the Hashemunoyim and then again, totally demolished and rebuilt in the time of Hurdus, who made it a beautiful and a ba- a building. And Chazal uh, say, Misha Loiro Binyan, Hurdus Loiro Binyan Meoma. But a lot of the original was, was kept, or at least was rebuilt to be the same as the original in many aspects. Yeah, yeah, so there yeah. is the two Shiorim called Shari Chuda that you can see. You don't have to pay for entrance. I mean, if you go, you can pay for an entrance, and it's called, uh, I forget the name of the archaeological park. And you can walk up the steps, and there's many mikvahs there, and there's so on and so forth. And they show you what was the main entrance at the time of the Shav that Hurdus had built it. What was the main entrance that there was, uh, there was sort of a fancy uh, staircase that going up, and uh, that was used besides the five shiorim. But uh, this, the, and the name of the Shari Hulda is still there. And why is it called Hulda? Because in the time of the first base of Mikdash, it was Hulda and the Via that would sit between the two gates. And that's where she would teach Torah and say her Dibre Nebua to Klal Yisro. Sorry, that, Sasson, you were saying something? That, that part of the wall on the south, that's, that's part of the wall that was added by Hurdus. That's not part of the original, original Harabai. As I said, they call it Shari Chulda, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it could very well be that it was uh, to commemorate the original Shari Chulda. It was rebuilt, but it was built with the in the same place where the original Shari Chulda was. Why should we think otherwise? We no, because we, 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 if, if, you, if you learn the Sugi, like I told you yesterday, from this archaeological evidence that the whole south part of the current Harabayit, is a, it was added on. So it was so the Harab, but the original... Who says it was the south? Maybe the north was added on. No, no, no because there are, there are places on the... On the, on the 
on the east side of the on the wall on the east. I would side. think the north was added on because if you believe north in the city of David, which is most archaeological uh, digs believe in it today, so why would you think that the Harabais was like way you know on the other side, and there would have been a huge gap in between? Uh, you know what? I guess we'll have to leave the uh, archaeological uh, discussion for a little later. And if I didn't, if I can know who is mute, muting me all the time. Who is what? Who is muting me all the time? I, I keep getting here a, a notice that that said I'm being muted by by the by, by the by somebody. You're not being muted. We can hear you. Now you can, but previously I, it was I was being muted. No, 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 no. If you unmute yourself, then you you can be heard. Okay. So I, I hear what you're saying, but um, the truth is, it makes no difference to 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 our discussion right now. Uh, when Hurdus rebuilt it, it stands to reason that he would rebuild it in the way that it was before. In other words, the amount of gates. In other words, the original thing is that there were two gates minadorim, and and the, and one and one gate and and all and the rest. Uh, one on the Mizrach and one on the Maidav and one on the Tzofan. There's no reason why he should rebuild it otherwise. But the bottom line is that today, if you go, as I said, if you go up the, if you go up the road from the Dung Gate, there is two uh, Sha'arim that are closed up and they are called Sha'ari Chulda. When we learn in the Mishnah Sha'ar Chulda, we're talking about the first base of Mikdash. Wait, what would you say? When we learn in the Mishnah about the Sha'ar Chulda. We're talking about the first base of Mikdash. Second base of Mikdash too, why not? No, because it might be moved. What? It may be like he's, first of all, the first and second were exactly the same. It's just that with after, in the second base of Mikdash Gufa, in the days of Hurdus, he expanded it in a spectacular way. And the Chazal say, Mishel Loiro, Binyan Hurdus, Loiro, Binyan Miyomo. And this is what Aaron, Aaron was just talking about. That he ex he expanded the whole Harabais. He brought more offer and avonim. He flattened it. He made it bigger and so on. So Aaron was saying that the the expansion that he did was in Sad Hadorim, and therefore the, what you're seeing right now, those gates are not the original gates. Uh -huh. I don't know. I, I don't know if the expansion was in the Sad Hadorim or no. in the Sad Hadorim. It, 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 it was on the, mostly on the north, but also on the south. And even the Kotel Hama'aravi today is, is not really the Kotel Hama'aravi, that's also expansion. What do you mean? The Kotel Hama'aravi, where people pray today, that's not the Kotel Hama'aravi of the original square. The original square that's on the Maidav side of, uh, of the, of the Harabais. But not of the original square. Oh, okay, okay. That, 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 that's... Uh... The original square was further in. Okay, fine. And that's why you can take the, 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 the Kotel tour. Yeah. Rabbi, a question. Yeah. Why these two names, Hulda Anivia and Nicanor, has Sharim on their name? And all the rest of the Sharim is Shah Shem, Shah Rashpatot. Well, you're talking, about, you're talking about the gates of Yerushalayim, and that you have to ask that you have to ask Aaron. Maybe Aaron could give you about those. So it probably has to do with uh, what the uh, with the Turks when they rebuilt uh, the walls of Yerushalayim. We're talking now about the gates of the Harabais. So those two were called uh, Right, I'm talking about Harabais. Uh, Sison is asking about the gates to Yerushalayim. Okay, he asked about Shara Nikanor, he says specifically. Oh, Sh Shara Nikanor, we'll get to a second. But the truth is that according to some of Hashem, all the gates had names to them that it merely mean to people because Kinifo uh, ki or ki Kifoinois mean Amaidev, and Amaidev is called Kifoinois, which some of Hashem hold is the name of a person, uh, perhaps the builder or the designer of the gate or the uh, some of Farshim uh, brought the Taisus Yom to Tefetis Yisrael say ki kifoinus merely means uh, in uh, maybe in Greek it means uh, uh, a rose a rose there was a rose garden where to, where, to, where in other words where now we know the Koisal Amarovi is somewhere in that vicinity there was um, archaeologists say that there was a um, there was a great marketplace but at some place some time or some place there 
according to the uh, to Ferris Yisrael, there was a rose garden, and that's why the gate there was called Sharki Finois. And then on the other side, this is also Mishamish Knis of Yisir, it was used as a regular gate going in and out. And then Teddy Minatsofan, it was called the Teddy Gate, uh, maybe for uh, Teddy Kal uh, Kolak, the mayor of Yerushalayim. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. So, so I mean, do we have written do we have uh, written prophecies from from Hulda in, in the Sefarim? Um, I don't know. Lawyer Mishamish Klum, he wasn't used uh, uh, for going in and out. Although later in the Pedic will say that it was used, but not regularly. It wasn't regularly used. And then there was the Shar Mizrah. Shar Mizrah is really the official gate going in to, because that's facing the base of Mikdash. Although practically Jews did not use the Shar Mizrah to get when the Euler Ragel were going up. So uh, again, going to what the archaeological digs show you now, uh, there is large, big steps going up on the Dorim side to the Shar Echulda. It was a uh, a great, huge, nice circular staircase going up on the side of Maid of Dodum, uh, which is sort of close to what's today the Koisla Marovi that many people use. And those seem to be the main entrance and exit. As the Mishnah says, totally on the other side, the Tzafim was hardly ever used. But the official entry was the Mizrach. However, that seems to be not the very used one. But what was it? It was the fancy gate. All of Shushan Abida Tsuda, uh, they, on that gate, they made a Tsuda of Shushan Abida. Because when they rebuilt the Beis Amikdash in the second, uh, the second uh, time, it was in the time of the Malchus Poras, and they got permission from Kodesh Merlech Poras to rebuild the Beis Amikdash. So in his honor, and in the honor of the, go the, uh, the government of Poras, they, uh, they put an image of Shushan Habida on the gates, the Shara Mizra going into the Arabais. It, it could also be that this was uh, a remnant to the great miracle that happened in Shushan. And they had a dual purpose. So the Persians will be happy. The Persians will say, you see, front gate going into the Temple Mount, the Arabais, the main gate, it's us. And the Eden will say, you see, the main gate, Mord Cheves to Beshushan Abira. So everyone's happy. Continue. Sheboi, through this uh, gate, Kohen Godel has soidev as Hapoda, the Kohen Godel that was burning the Pora Dumo, and the Hapoda, Machom Masada, and all the people that are helping, Yoitzel Aramishcha, they go out to the Aramishcha, which is the Harazais. There's two mountains. There is the Har Abayis, which is Har Moidiya, and there is Har Mishcha, which is Har Azaisim. And they would build a ramp from one to the other. And the ramp would go from the door of the Har Abayis all the way to the other side to the Har Azaisim, the Har Mishcha. That's where they would do the Pora Aduma. Even though the uh, the, uh, the only the mayor holds that you need a coin goddle for a pora duma, and we pass can that a coin head could do it too. So, firstly, this Mishnah might hold that the uh, Allah is the coin goddle has to do it, but uh, it could be also it's a shigla delishna, even though it's uh, the it's uh, it's kosher with a coin head yet. But the Mitzias was that obviously the coin goddle wanted to have the schools to do it, so the regilus was that the coin goddle did it. The Mishnah here is not pass canning dinim. If it's kosher, the coin had it, and not kosher, the coin had it. The Mishnah is just stating the fact was that the coin and Gedolim are the ones that did the Pora Aduma. So therefore, Sheboi, through this gate, the coin God, La Saida, Paporo, Pora, Bahamas, Ada, Yoytim, Lana Mishnah. Shiva Shara, Mahib Azara, there were seven gates in the Azara. For pictures, look in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, the email that we, was sent out, and you'll see beautiful pictures uh, illustrating it. So basically, there were three in the Tzafan side, three on the Dharam, and one in the, and one in the front. You have to realize the Azara is the holiest place. The Azara is, uh, is uh, within the Mishkan. So the Azara really is 
gates around the, the, the wall around the Azar is like the, the gate around the Mishkan. In other words, the actual Mishkan is like the Kodesh and Kodesh HaKadosh. And then there was uh, there was fifth, uh, there was uh, there, there was the, uh, the the curtain that went all around it, fifty by hundred ama in the mishkan, and keneged zeladoidus. There was the walls that surrounded the building, the kodesh and the kodesh kadoshim, the heichel, and within those walls was also the mizbeach, and that's where they did the, the there was the primary place of doing the avodah in the base of mikdash. So that had an unbelievable kedusha, and therefore. Uh, that was uh, only permissible for the Kayanim to go there. And uh, that's the place we're talking about. And the Azoda had seven gates, three on the Tzofim, the three on the Dodim, and one on the front. The three that are on the Dodim is Shara Delik, the fuel gate, because that's where the fuel went in for the Mizbeach, the wood they would carry in through there. Shani Lashara Bakhidas, the gate of the Bakhidas, that's where they bring the Bakhidas in because the Bakhidas are kosher if they do the Shit also on Torah. Shlish Lashara Maim, the third gate was Shara Maim that would use for uh, bringing in the jug of water that they would bring in Mashafta Maim Masosa in the days of Sukkis. And then there's the front gate. Shaba Mizrach is the front gate. What's the front gate? Shah Niknar, the gate of Niknar. There were two rooms on the two sides of the gate of Niknar, which is the front gate going into Azar. One on the right, one on the left. The person who was uh, was Malbish, so uh, the big day Koinim, so basically that was his Lishka, his room, where he was in charge of the big day Koinim. That was the, the room where they made the Chavitim, the Kohen Gadu, which was brought every single day. And next Mishnah, Rabbi, can I ask often, you, you know, before we continue the next Mishnah, so he's talking already about Shah Niknar, this is a beautiful Gemara that talks about the Shah Niknar. It's a Gemara in Yuma. Gemara says that the Niknar Nasu Nisim Ladal Soisim. Or with the miracles, Nikner went, Nikner was a yid, and he went with his whole heart, he went to Alexandria, Shomitzraim, over there, there was unbelievable craftsmen, and he commissioned them to build for him gorgeous two doors, which will be for the entrance of the base of Mikdash de Azora. Chazir Osir, when he came back from Mitzrayim, Om Dalav Nachsho, there was a Nachsho, uh, which is a wave. There, there were storms in the ocean. And Om Dalav Nachsho should be able to drown the, him and the ship. Not to Achis man, the, the people in the ship took one of the gates, but the Lulayam, they put it in the ocean. Adayin lo'y nochi yam the ocean did not come down. Bikshu lahakte l'schavreto, they tried to throw the second one. So now, Omad who bekorcha, he stood and he wrapped himself around it. Omar lahem, he said, If you're going to throw the gate, you're throwing me with it. Biad no chayam mezapa. Immediately, the ocean stopped from its uh, from, from its uh, from from its storm. He had an unbelievable tzad, and the first one that already was thrown out. When they came to Akui. So the other gate came at came jumping out from under the, the walls of the Svina. That there was this huge uh, creature in the ocean that swallowed it and, and spit it out when they came to the Abosha. Rabbi, could I ask a question? Yeah. We, we're learning about all these, these uh, um, uh, how to make the base of Middash and everything. When Mashiach comes, what are they going to test us, or or will we look over the Kayan, the Kahanim, and say, "Oh, you're not doing it correctly"? Yeah, exactly. So maybe, First of all, building the base of Mikdash is not only Kohanim. Every Yid has the mitzvah, and the Mefarshim say, like the Toisus Yomtev wrote a whole sefer, Sura Sabayis, it's nicely reprinted about uh, building the third base of Mikdash. So he writes in his uh, foreword to the Sefer, he says, 
What's going to happen when Mashiach comes, according to the opinion that we have to build? No one knows what they're doing. We're going to get a couple of architects. They'll say, oh, we could build the Eiffel Tower if you want. We could build the Louvre in France. We could build uh, the Met Stadium. But based on Mikdash, we don't begin to know. What, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to build? What are you going to do? You're going to give them a Shnayis Midas like this? You're going to go like this? Here, here is the Shnayis Midas? There obviously is going to have to be tons and tons of Eden that learned the Gemara Tamid and the Mishnayis Midas and the Ramah Milchus Besamchida and Sefer Yechespul and Tanakh and there's going to be the plans will be drawn up and then there'll be critics. We're going to criticize it. We're going to criticize uh, it. By Yidin, if you have, one, when you have one person, you have two opinions. Exactly. Well, that's why it's going to come but, from but, but we need people to have opinions. If no one ever learned the Mishnayas, no one ever published we, any we, articles on it, no one ever spoke about it. So today you have scholars that are learning that's a big sugya and they learn the sugya and they, 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 they know it inside out. And there's machloikis about this. And then every detail is machloikis and there's a this way, that way. Then draw plans. And so, then so, you can establish so the best in Agadu who will say, okay, we, we're going to pass him like this. We're going to pass him like this. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But at least we have hundreds of thousands of Eden that are in the loop, and they're yes, going to so, argue yes. about this until we come up with the right plan of how to build it. But my, so then my next question is, if that's the case, how come there's nobody giving out smicha of, of Binyam Beis Hamikdash and all the dinim? We're giving about other things if we really feel that Mashiach is around the corner and it's going to be Binyam Beis Hamikdash, why don't the Rabbanim go ahead and give out smicha for this particular thing? That question. means we're all fakers. Yeah, in order to give smicha, you the, the person who gives it has to know what he's talking about. Unfortunately, we're talking a sugya that uh, the person who's supposed to be giving the smicha might not know that much more than the student. <laughs> <laughs> there is there is a shivin Shalaim right? That they, that they walk in on it and they did the clothing from Kuya and Kuya. They're already in the closet. All the and the whatever it could be done for Besamikdus now, they already built. Yeah, they have right. a lot of chalim. They have a lot of chalim that they build. But you know, the thing is, like, yeah. the chalim and stuff like that, they're not sure what, what they use. You right. Know, they have... So I think we're not sure. But if we're misastic in it, so Mashiach will come, the Bez Nagadul will decide this way or that way. But there has to be Akasha, this way or that way. But uh, if there's no, no one ever spoke about it, no one ever dealt about it, no one knows, no one thinks. So what it, the Bez could decide and we have a dispute, and there is 10 opinions. The Bezna is going to say, we're going to go with this opinion, but no one ever learned about it. We have to learn about it. I think Donald Trump wants to build a base in Megidas. He, the the he, he put a few billion dollars. The only thing is he wants to make it high. <laughs> huge, the, huge, yes, it's huge. The Mashiachites are not doing what they're supposed to do then. Yeah. But that's why we're learning. The Rebbe had a big, big koch. Uh, the Rebbe in, uh, in Tav Shem Lama Test started this campaign that we should learn the halachis and the Mishnah, the, the, in the Tanakh, and in the Mishnah, and in the Gemara, and in the Rambam, we should learn about the building of the Beis Mikdash and the Big Dikarnam and so on. Not only there are yeshivas today, like in Brisk, that they learn Kotshim Masechtas, like Zvachim and Ochas, Tmura and so on, which is the Karbonis in the base of Mikdash. But, uh, but there is a whole other issue, which is how the architecture of the base of Mikdash. There's a whole different sugya and different masechtas, Tomid, Bidois, Yecheskel, Tanakh, and so on. Okay. So the Ben Yoda, the Ben Yishchai, is a beautiful beard on the story of Nikma. It's a beautiful husband. It says like this. It says, what does it mean? Omad Allah, Nachshel Shabayam Latoivot. Aboy. What does it mean? It says like this. Nachshel is Isis Nochash. Nochash Loy. Nochash Loy. There is the Nochash, which is the Sotan had. 
unbelievable. It was Makatik in time of Sakona. He said, who gave Nikna the right to go on Mitzrayim? So therefore, it the uh, Chatoida says, like the Sif from Lashem Adar Chazay Oid, so he's not allowed to go. So therefore, he, I could I could kill him. I could make a I could make a storm in the ocean. But really, it was not true. Because he went there only to do business to bring the gates to the base of Mikdash. And according to the, the, the Arizal, he already broke the mile and it's Kedusha. You're allowed to live there. There's many reasons why you are allowed to live, go down there at least to do business. And therefore, or the Midas Adin was uh, 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 ended up turning it around. And instead of Nachsha and Nachosh, which is Nachosh Top, and Nachsha was Loy Nachosh, it was turned around, it was a nest. And, uh, and and not only was uh, the gates brought intact, but there was a nest that happened in honor of Nikna. Uh, there's another beautiful kasha from the Ben Ishchai. Ben Ishchai says, I don't understand what's going on. I should don't understand a few things, he says. He, first, he let them through one gate. Second gate, oh, now I'm not going to let you. Now I'm not going to let you. First gate, he let them. Second gate, now I'm not going to let you. And now that he didn't let them, there was a miracle. And the storm immediately stopped. The Midas Arachim said, well, oh, how should, come this person should die? It's not fear he should die. So he was saved and he saved the gates. Now all of a sudden he had Tsar, Vahim Tsar al Khavrita. That he, so in other words, he regrets. He says, oh, I should have done this trick in the beginning. I should have said, you're going to throw out the gate and throw me with. So maybe she said, you know what, we'll make a miracle for him. And the other, the other gate, instead of sinking, traveled with them. So uh, Taka, what was he thinking, Machatchila? What was he thinking in the end? First of all, is a person allowed to kill himself in order to save the gates of the base of Mikdash? Is it permissible? And if it's permissible, why do you think about it, the second door, not the first door? And why once he did it already, he was Metzah on the first one? So um, the Ben Ishchai says like this. First of all, he says that there is... It's a big uh, pilpul uh, among Toyskim. If a person is allowed to, if a person is going to have Yisurim, if he's allowed to uh, cause his death in order not to have Yisurim, there are those that hold that it's mutter. Well, you meet if there is those that hold that it's mutter. So according to those shittas, he says, I understand why it would be mutter for him to let himself be killed in order to, for the gates to not be thrown in. Because he realized that if he's, the gates will be thrown in, he's going to have such pain, he's going to have such yusurim, he's anyway going to die. But he'll live for five years, unbelievable yusurim. So a person that knows that, it goes into the whole political question, or ethical question of euthanasia. Amos uh, Chesed. So there are poets from Gedoli Yisrael, that hold that if a person would have Yisurim, then he's allowed to uh, he's allowed to end his life in order not to have the Yisurim. So uh, that's the first thing from the Benishchai. The Benishchai says like this. When they were going to throw out the first gate, if he was going to, maybe they'll throw him with the gate. And what's going to be the second gate? They'll take it for themselves. So he, he couldn't play games. He couldn't play games. So therefore, he didn't, he didn't offer to be thrown out. But when they were going to throw out the second gate, so now there's nothing left to live for. Why should he stay alive? So now he said, throw me in. But when he said, throw me in, they, really, they stood back. Whoa, whoa. They're going to throw you in. They, they, they thought for a moment. At that moment, it was a miracle, and the storm stopped. So now he felt bad. He said, oi. And I said this Khatila, then show my Mesid is Nevish to begin with. Then I, I wouldn't have lost even the first gate. So Nevish made a miracle because he saw how much Tsar Nikon had. So Nevish made a miracle that the second gate traveled with them and didn't sink. But Rabbi, why, why Nikano make two gates, not one? Why he needed two? Why? Because it's fancy. Think about it a fancy house, you know, one door. Very fancy. Two gates. One door is like, you know, my house and your house, Shulik's house. No, also, the size, the size of the gate. It was like 15 feet wide. Yeah, never by, mind the size. Like 30 feet, feet high. high. But I'm it just saying huge. aesthetics. 
you think of any uh, any palace or any kosher two gates they open up it's too short in open up the two gates uh, all the show him in the azore who was huge it was like 20 yeah, feet yeah. high by okay. by 15 feet right. high it was huge all right 10 by 20 or two or, tw- or whatever usually 10 by 20 right like amos, people stand is, next to each other could walk in but it's huge shot. 10 by 20 right. whatever you, you know 10 by 20 amos is uh, like, like three floor feet three, high. three or four uh, floor high right Ooh. exactly but uh, more than two in what hard. situation rabbi i have a question in what situation would a person be allowed to take his life if a person is allowed to take his life you said there are certain certain opinions that if he's gonna uh, if he's going to be tortured then he's allowed to to terminate terminate his life in order to avoid the torture and which case was this referring to so that's why Niknor, what the Ben the Ben Ishchai says, Niknor knew that if he's going to lose both gates, he's going to have such pain by the fact that he spent his his whole his whole fortune, his whole life, to make these doors for the Azora. He knew he's going to he's going to have a heart attack, and he's going to have another heart attack, and he's going to just have pain without end until he dies. Okay. So he said he might as well just die immediately painless instead of living another couple of years with pain okay thank you so uh as i, I mean we're not going in now to this question uh and i i think we might have once covered it and if we didn't you remind me and i'll cover it on a sunday morning that's something that we would typically cover on a sunday morning sheer but uh the lesson that we see in avoid this hashem is unbelievable as soon as nick said that's it that's it. You're not throwing out the other gates. If you throw the gate, you're throwing me with the gate. That's it. Sotan had no more koyach. Nachsho, loy nachosh, nachosh tov, nachoshes. Finished. As soon as the yid shows his power, his strength from the sidis nefesh, as soon as the yid shows his koyach from the sidis nefesh, the sotan is finished. It's over. The storm is over. Sometimes in life, it seems like our avoidance system is impossible. It's impossible. It's just impossible. We have to jump into the ocean. But when he says with strength, he says, you're going to throw the gates of the base of Mikdash into the ocean. I'm jumping in with it. It's over. It's as if there was never a storm. The whole ocean all of a sudden is nice and calm. Not only that, the first gate that was thrown overboard, even that one, instead of sinking, is a miracle and it travels. That's an unbelievable lesson of Ayyad Hashem for us. Let's continue next Mishnah, Shabbat Safan. In the Safan side, there is, again, three gates, the Shara Nitzutz. And that's the first gate. Right in front of the, the look at the pictures, the beautiful picture that there was a, uh, there was in front of it, there was like a awning with four, uh, with four beams. There was a, a, a little house on top of that. And that was called the base of Nitzitz. And over there is Koyanim, Shemini, Melamai, the Malabim, Melamata. The Koyanim was standing on the top and the Lim, on the bottom. This is one of the places of they were guarding. As we said, that the, the Shari Azorah was a place that uh, was one of the places that uh, one of the 24 places where they were guarding. And there was a gate going out to the place which is not the, the Koyanish, but the Chayel. In other words, the, the, the space that was outside the Azara. Chaining the second gate was Shara Carbon that uh, that uh, they would bring the Karbanas through that gate because Kochi Kadoshim Shikatasan Matsafan. Slishila the third is Basa Mukid, which is the Basa Mukid. And the Basa Mukid is a large place as the Mishnah continues. That Arab Lishkos have a Basa Mukid, there were four rooms in the Basa Mukid. Kiki Tainus Psuchas Lutraklin, and there was is like um, like small rooms opened up to a big big a hall 
So there was basically sort of a square and four in every corner, there was a different room. Similar to as it's notion. Two of the rooms were in the Kaidish and two was in the Chayel because this, this, this square room, half of it was in the place of the Kaidish and half of it was in the place of the Chayel. There were beams sticking out in the walls to show you that till here is the Kaidish and past that is the Chayel. It's important to know because till where you, could you eat certain Korobonus and so on, you have to know till where is Kaidish and where does it begin the Chayel. My Mishamsh is the four rooms in that uh, in the base of Maikit. Marav is the that the one room which is in Marav is the Raymond, so it's a Lishkis, Kailoi, Karban, that's where they would keep the sheep for the Karban Tomid. Like the Mishnah says in the Erechim in the beginning, that the Empoich is a Mishisha Tloim of a Karban, a Lishkis, a Tloim, you have to have at least six of them at a time there. The Midraim is Mizrachis, Yaisa, Lishkis, I say, Lachim upon him, that's where they'd make the Lachim upon him. Mizrachis, fine is. And that's where the place where the the Hashmanoi put the rocks in the Mizbech that uh, that that were defiled by the Yavonim. It's fine as my is which is the fourth one, Bo Yurdim Labesatfila. There was a door there. They would go down to underground uh, to the place where they can go to the mikvah. Next mission. Shnei shanam ala beis ha'maike. The word the beis ha'maike also had two gates. Echem b'sol lach lachel and b'sol azara. One goes out to the chayil, which was also the 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 opposite side of the azara, and one is the side of the azara. I'm going to do that. The b'sol lach lazara pish pish katan ha'eloi. The door that was open to the azara was a big gate, but also had a little door on the side. Shaboy nichnas and livre shes azara and. Uh, through that gate, they would go every morning to check out the uh, uh, the, the, the Azara to make sure that everything is in order. Today in Hebrew, a uh, spy is called a balash, right? Uh, to check out the Azara. This base of Moikid was, you should know, that keep uh, that was keeper. That it was just like today, you have buildings near Shalim that the top of it is a dome, it's a keeper. It was built, the top was a keeper, a big keeper, Groisa keeper. So, not it's this size, but bigger than this, yeah? It was a huge play, a huge keeper, a huge dome. Base Godelhoi doesn't say the size, but it tells you it was a huge building, the base of Mike. Mukif Ravadim Shalim, and there was benches made out of rock sticking out of the walls. And what was the function of those benches? Zikne base of the the elders of every base of, which served at different days in the base of Mikdash. Shishenim shtam they would sleep there by night. Mafteches azara biyadam, and they had the mafteches azara biyadam doesn't mean mamish in their hands, as we we'll see soon. It wasn't in their hand, uh, but uh, meant that they had the uh, ownership of the mafteches of the azara. Pichikun and the young kohen finem ish ksusibaris. Each one slept on his little. Uh, uh, sleep, uh, what's going uh, sleeping bag on the ground, so it was a huge room, and they would sleep, you know, sprawled out on the ground, whatever that day. They, they wouldn't, they, they would come the night before and sleep there, and they would get up early in the morning. And that was the base of that did the avoid that day in the base of Mikdash. Next, Mishnah Makamayim Sham in the base of Mikdash was a place that was Amal Amma, the Tavla Shal Shaish, and there was it was big and Amma by Amma, and there was a plate. On top of it, made of shayish, the tavasak buyaba, and there was a there was a, a ring, so you could pick it up. The shalshelas, and there was a uh, there was a chain. Shemavtechas a plimba, and there was the keys of the azara were in it. So in other words, it was like it was the top. You couldn't see anything. You just saw a key and a plate. When you picked it up underneath, there was a key hanging from a chain, and that's how they would sort of hide. The key, keys of the base of Mikdash. He gives man nila when they have to uh, lock the gates. He gives bia as a tavla b'tabas. The coin who was in charge of the gates, called the shoyev, would pick it up and take the keys and lock it. And then not long to take the shalshalas, he would take the keys from the uh, chain. No lock him with him. He would lock them on the inside. Ben Levi yoshev lebachutz, and the Ben Levi was in the outside. Yoshev 
the coin was uh, from the in, were guarding from the inside, and the Levine would guard from the outside. If when he finished locking all the shariahs, he put it back on the chain. He put back the plate that's placed. And then the coin that was there, he put his pillow over it. And he went to sleep. In other words, for safety. The keys are not available for anyone. You would have to wake up the coin and pull them away and, and go down, down there if you wanted to get the keys. Israeli not allowed to go to these places. Huh? Israeli not allowed to go to these places because... No way. Right. So to, we are allowed to have a camera to see what other kind of walking from Sheikh will come? <laughs> we'll have to deal with that soon. Well, we can, I mean, Pashtus, it, it said that even the Kurdish Kadoshim, they tried to send Koinim. They couldn't send Koinim. They would send Levim. Otherwise, he said, Elam, they'd send them in boxes. They couldn't send them in boxes. They'd just walk in. When you have to do service to avoid the, the, to build a base of Mikdash, then you just do whatever you need to do. So, Mashiach is going to come. In order to build a base of Mikdash, you got to do what you got to do. You have to have workers there. They're going to build. Whatever you got to do, you got to do. Once it's built, even for the maintenance, you try to have Kainim do it. But if the Kainim don't have the expertise, again, you do what you have to do in order. Even the Kodesh HaKadoshim, you try to send them in through elevators from the top. But if you couldn't organize these elevators, you do what you have to do. Let them go through the front door. Whatever includes maintenance, building, you do what you have to do. The Pashtas. One of the Kodesh HaKadoshim, he went uh, through that fourth gate, uh, fourth room to go underground. And there was a, there, there was a tunnel. On both sides there were candles, so it wasn't pitch dark. And he would be toivel in the mikveh. After he went to the mikveh, he still can't do that void. He has to wait to be at the uh, heart of Shemesh. So he would go out from the other side of the of the cave, and it would end up close to the other side of the heart of ice. And he would go out from the shara tedi, which was all the way in the top, which was a gate that usually was not used. Okay, so out comes the first Patek. So we should summarize the first Patek. The, the, uh, the, uh, the main theme of the first Patek was that the, uh, uh, talking, about, uh, to- talking about the mitzvah of the Shomri Meshmeres HaKodesh. Agav this, so we talk about the 24 places where they guarded. So already the Mishnah goes through uh, all these places and what their function was. As we said, two in Yonim that we spoke about outside this Patek was one about the story of Shara Nikana and the miracle of the Shara Nikana and the Pshat of the Beni Shrei. And the other thing we spoke about was the, uh, the story of the Ishar Abayis that would often be, if you got stuck with the Ishar Abayis catching you, copping a little snooze or being a little lethargic or tired. And we said, this is an unbelievable lesson of Aydis Hashem, like the Mendel Futafa says, what are you getting cold? How do you get, how do you get cold? You should be warm. You have the schus to be serving for the czar. So same thing over here. The lesson that we learn in our Vedas Hashem is, what are you getting tired? How are you getting tired? You should, you should be full of enthusiasm, full of koyach, full of... We're the last generation of Golas, we're the first generation of Gula. We're finishing off this Golas. We're bringing in the Gula, Amitas Vashlema. We're learning Mishnayis, Maseches, Midas. We're going to be from the people advising and criticizing the architects for the Beis HaMikdush. <clears throat> We're going to be one that's going to do the Makkah Patish for this Golos. How can we sleep at night? We're full of enthusiasm. And if we're not, the Harabais, the Ish Harabais comes along and says, ha, ha, ha. The Sanish good. You shouldn't be lethargic. You should be Mali Simch. So, like the Alta Rebbe says in Tanya, that there is Ched V'tikoye B'liboye B'sitre Do, and the opposite B'sitre Do, Excited that we have this unbelievable mission. On the other hand, we're upset that we're in the Bain of Mitzorim and we're yet to see the Gula Mitzvah Vashlema. Not only we don't see, but we see a Choshech Kafel the Machupel in this entire world, and uh, and including an Eretz Yisrael that is a bite from the Gula Mitzvah Vashlema. So David says, "Al Hafen Take in the Schus of our enthusiasm to do our Avoda, to just like Nikanor when he showed the strength." He says, I'm jumping in with that gate. You're not throwing that gate. So that was it. Nocham is apoy. 
that we should be zeichet, that we should be nocha yom mezapoi, and we should be zeichet the gula mitzvahs v'shleim by the Mashiach to Amen. Amen. Okay, I think joining us. Him, his right. name was Nikanor, not Nikanor. Nikanor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Susan. If somebody wants COL as a project, and you go on COL and you see somebody teaching me this with a video, with pictures. So you have, whoever we talk, you see. I want to see a video, a general video, sort of a 3D something yes. on the Beis Amikdash. That, that, they have that? Oh, that COL has it, yeah. No, okay, okay, thank you. Sure. 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 So you go one by one and you see Mamish, they're all really nice. Sure. There's the space over here. I think they've had some tombs so far. Yeah. Really nice. Okay. I learned that based on Mikdash Ashlishi is going to come down from Shemayim and nobody can destroy it anymore. We have That's to do no it. question that no one's going to be able to destroy it. Was a is it showing him if it's coming down in Ashemayim or it's going to be built? Right. But the gate, the gate for the Shiorim, we have to do for sure. Exactly. Okay, four people leave. We need people to make siyumim during the nine days. Yes, anyone that would like to sign up to make siyumim in the nine days. We'd love to have that every single night of the nine days that there should be a seum. That means tomorrow we'll night on, huh? Tomorrow night is already a seum. Tomorrow night is already a Yes, Shabbat. starting from tomorrow night. Shabbat. Please Shabbat. contact me or parents. My son-in-law tells me he has two or three seum in Masechtis, and he'll be here for Shabbos. He can do one on Shabbos. Parents has a seum Masechta. How many do you have, parents? One. One. I could do two, but one for sure. Already. So we have four out of nine. We're doing good. So if we could, uh, if, if anyone else has a seam of sect, otherwise I can ask around, uh, maybe in Crown Heights. There's a few in light that can do it. Anyone that has a seam of sect, please let us know. Okay, Shukayach, everyone, for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you.